You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. So I think this is the first time in Movie Guys history where we're going to review the same movie twice. Or maybe not the same movie. We'll discuss it. Eric, how the hell are you doing? I'm excited to talk about this one. I have been ever since it came out on Thursday and it streamed for everybody. This, well, we had a conversation before this, right? And I was, I was expecting the worst. I was expecting Man of Steel and Batman v Superman again, and I was, I really was uh, expecting that. I, I don't think it could have been any worse than uh, Justice League 2017. But, well, that's why we're here to talk about it. We are. I mean, uh, Zack Snyder, this is his version. So um, he, did this, fan- he did this for free, didn't he? He did this without pay? Right, right. I, I just, I just want to let the fans know that I'm not going to get into the history of it because, Eric, I have bored you to death with the history of why this movie happened. So if you're listening to this episode – do the research on why this is even coming out. I don't want to bore you guys of why. Um, but this is allegedly his vision, and I just love how the poster is black and white and douchey. Like it's <laughs> I, I was doing a lot of behind the camera research for this. Because I think I got a lot of, you know, the, the, the stories and the movie down. So I wanted to learn about how we got to this point. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think originally he wanted this entire movie to be black and white. Yeah, he did. Like, I, I, I don't get him. You know, I, I, I don't get him before we talk about the movie overall. You know, Snyder and I definitely have a love-hate relationship. I mean, there are some movies that he has made that I really applaud. Sure. And there are some movies that he's made, I'm just like, what are you doing, bud? I mean, one of my favorites, I know it's not one of yours, is actually Watchmen. And I liked it when it came up because it was different. It was new. I never heard of Watchmen. And it was something that I'd never seen before. Mm-hmm. So I kind of liked that slow burn of these people are not really superheroes besides the blue one. You know what I mean? I'm being I'm being, I'm being cheeky, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, Dr. So, Manhattan. Right. And it's like I just I just found that conflict interesting. So I tell you what, though, halfway through this movie, I don't feel like he has he has grown as a director or a writer because this feels like. Watchmen, it truly does. Yeah, this this entire movie very much feels very Zack Snyder uh, from beginning to end, from the opening, yeah, it, it, everything about it, you know. And right. I feel like um, he got a lot of steam from maybe Dawn of the Dead, and then even more from Three Hundred. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then after that, he kind of had the uh, the end night Shyamalan disease, where he's just riding the coattails off of the one and into the other ones because he did uh, a lot of other. He did, uh, besides Watchmen, he did Sucker Punch, which a lot of people is kind of like a, a hit or miss right there too. Um, so yeah, he's he's kind of it's either you love him or you hate him. I think. Right, I I, I agree with you. Okay, so we're going to talk about if, if we're going to love or hate this movie. Um, I thought that it was just deleted scenes or just fillers that he was pissed off about. I didn't know that he refilmed pretty much 90% of the movie. Joss uh, Whedon. No, uh, Snyder. Snyder. I mean, all this was all this refilmed. I uh, no. I, I I from what I had seen or my research is that um, he had complete. He had done a lot of. The, the filming that he wanted to do. Um, and then obviously, very Snyder, uh, everything's done in, in the editing room. Right. But I think he, had, for the majority, had gotten the scenes that he wanted to do with the exception of maybe, uh, you know, the ending or, or whatever else he wanted to, uh, to come at. And then when the, his family tragedy happened and Joss stepped in, they spent like another hundred million Joss did and the studio on reshoots to make 2017 Justice League what it is today. Interesting. Okay, so Josh, Josh, whatever. Joss. Josh. Uh, People are, are now calling Alien. I, I like that in 2017 they're uh, they're calling that version the Justice League. 
Nice. Uh, um, I never, I never liked Mr. Whedon because he destroyed Alien for me. Um, well, he's under hot water right now. Here is he a, needs to be. yeah, here is a man who has a reputation for uh, not putting people of color in in his in his films. Um, he is a renowned feminist, but then he also has quite a history with harassment. It's uh, you know, but this is this is Hollywood nowadays, and everything's just kind of gotcha and right. You know, Okay, so I did not know that. I thought it was reversed. So these scenes were already filmed, probably all besides the Joker scene. I kind of feel like that was tacked on. Yeah, yeah, you can, and uh, I believe one of the end sequences with um, Martian Manhunter too. When, that was uh, added too. That okay. was added as well. And there's there's your other parts of it as well, but you could really see what was cut right from the original after watching this one. Right, because the, butchered because, even. Oh, butchered would be a good word because the beginning of the original movie, uh, it was all about uh, Stephen Wolf and what happened and the mother boxes. But in the beginning of this one, it's Superman getting stabbed and killed by Dark Side, not Dark Side, Doomsday, and he lets out the scream and it wakes the mother boxes. Controversial. I'd like the original opening better because it gives us why these mother boxes or think is mother boxes are not explained until about the hour, hour and a half mark. Well, this it's definitely, a film. yeah, it, it, it definitely is. It, it was still, I think it done a better job uh, in the long run than 2017, where you have Batman basically just killing a parademon on the roof. And right. then the aftermatter of the parademon just kind of shows for no reason, three boxes. Right. No, you know, that, 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 that's, that's absolutely horrible. What I'm saying is just, uh, it's just the beginning of the 2017 oh, movie where it's yeah, about yeah, the yeah. battle. You're right. You're right. Uh, where it's just, okay, this is Stefan Wolf. This is your bad. This is the battle. Here's all the DC heroes with the green lanterns and all that stuff. And here are the mother boxes. So we have, okay, now we know with this movie, my issue was I didn't like the scream in the beginning. Regardless of what I already know, it's just I don't like the screen because it's like, oh my god, it's like an hour and a half for them to explain what these mother boxes are, and yeah. that was kind of annoying to me. I thought it was done better in the 2017 one, but you're right because in the next scene after that first battle, it's just Batman killing a parademon, which is like, okay. Yeah, there's there's a lot to take from from the two movies, and I, again, just after watching this one, it really puts it into perspective on how bad they fucked up on the first one. Oh yeah, but they, they fucked up terribly. I and don't then, blame uh, Josh, by the way, not to cut you off, I don't blame him. I blame, obviously, the studio. Always mm -hmm. and forever, the studio. Warner Brothers has done an abysmal job of trying to carry this out. They are all over the place. They keep on... I feel like any decision that they make just goes, oh, but it's not Marvel. Oh, but it's not Marvel. And we have to make it more, more Marvel. And that's just... It was so horrible because in the first justice league you have a lot of jokes like uh, that's where all those, those reshoots came from was the jokes you know i, I noticed that yeah it was not jokey you're right yeah and dc has not been jokey dc is a very dark and gritty universe and i i feel like we this is what we what we got you know a very unsaturated world um where it just yeah, where the, the heroes were heroes, or not not just heroes, but tormented by their real life. Right. Uh, speaking of torma uh, tormation, is that a word? Tormation? Um, I want to talk about right off the bat, Victor Stone, Cyborg, a character, right, that when I, when I personally, when I first saw the Justice League movie, um, I was like, okay, I know who Cyborg is, but he's in this movie? Why? Like, it was confusing. Uh, there was no story. Behind him, he was a pretty much a throwaway character. And you want to talk about completely adding depth to a one-dimensional character, bravo, right there with mm. the Snyder Cut. Like, Cyborg's care. I actually rooted for Cyborg, which I didn't do in 2017. Like, I feel for the guy. Yeah, he's actually a character in this movie. Yes, yes. And, and I'm not saying that it's amazing, Eric. I'm just saying, like, wow, okay, that's like... Studio, you're stupid. Like this is a whole thing because I don't believe that football scene was in there. Um, 
how his half of his body was completely gone and his dad revived. Like none of that was there. I mean, it was glossed over very, very quickly, even if it was. But yeah, it gave depth to a lot of the characters, not just not just the 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 good guys, the the supers that we got out of, because uh, Barry Allen had his introduction uh, a lot more well explained as well too. But we also right. out of the baddies too, like they actually have purpose now, rather than just being like, oh well, Earth is here and we're gonna destroy it. Absolutely. I mean, Steppenwolf, actually, do I want to say it's thanos C Because Darkseid's kind of thanos C, but, like, I actually understand Steppenwolf now. Plus, he looks a lot better, and they changed the voice, too. Oh, he noticed. looks way better in this one. Yeah, like like his armor moved, like his armor's, like, alive. Like, yeah. I really dig that, too. Um, one thing that you were complaining, because for the fans here, Eric and I were texting each other for the first at least two hours, maybe the first hour, uh, watching this saying, oh, what's this? What's this? Um, we get uh, Wonder Woman also taking down terrorists. Was that in the original at all? What, I don't remember that. Her introduction? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I thought it was. Not like not like this. They had to redo it because, because that one quick segment uh, when he was uh, shooting uh, the assault rifle and she was kept on blocking with her uh, wrists things like really fast you don't talk about like yeah that was, that was that was pretty cool that was amazing that was not in the original because that was too good to be in the original it uh a lot of those decisions seemed kind of weird like she's trying to save people from a bomb and yeah, that, that's in the uk and she ends up doing more damage than the bomb would you know like i, I you know, obviously she saved lives here but at the end the human terrorist that was there she uses the bracers and she claps them together to to make the the boom, mm -hmm. and she blows out like the the entire front of the building. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, yeah. what, you know, like what? Why would you do that? Why? Because here's the thing. Just like what, just what Batman and Superman was all based apart. Innocent people dying, so they made sure that an innocent build, building was was blown up, not people, because the terrorist was going to blow up the building and the people. She just saved the people, which we care about. I get it, but you, well, yeah, that's the other part is that Josh or Zack Snyder doesn't really care about people at all, uh, right? No, <laughs> uh, uh, or, or Snyder, does. yeah, but it's still like she. We just saw a whole sequence of her deflecting bullets from a from an assault rifle, you know, right. from an automatic weapon, and you're telling me that when he reloaded, that you couldn't just like, you, you know, you're faster than the bullet. You're Wonder Woman, Diana, you're faster than the bullet. Why couldn't you just, like, run up and, like, disarm them? But, uh, you know, that's... Uh, you know, I, I, feel uh, like, I feel like if we're going to get into the, the little nitty grits here, then uh, we're going to make this a two-hour show. No, we don't make this a two-hour... The, this show is going to be as long as the movie. Um, Timeline-wise, I found this interesting I was reading out today, is, of course, this takes place after the first two Wonder Woman movies, but... Um, the guy who plays Aquaman, Jason Mama, Mamoa, whatever, yep. uh, says that Aquaman actually takes place after Justice League, not before. Correct. Because um, I did not know that Whedon's version took that took place before. So that's interesting because like that that gives his character more weight for when you go see Aquaman because he's like a nomad. Uh, in a was it like a what like an Ireland. Sea, seaside town kind of yeah, I mean like Nordic Nordic okay so like that makes sense about what happens because we get William Defoe in this which he was not in the original Justice League as far as I know I, I didn't see him in the original Justice League but um yeah that was another uh thing to see in the credits and to see like oh he's in this movie it's like oh they put up a lot of a lot of celebs in this movie a lot of big bills here don't you think, though, okay, so just off the movie real quick, don't you think that massive lawsuits are probably um, deserving here? Just because, like, from what you have told me, which I thought was the complete opposite, bud, like, I thought this was all refilmed, and you're telling me, no, this was already filmed, and the studio just completely fucked it up. So it's like, like, William Dafoe was cut, um... Who else? What well, a lot of cyborg. I mean, I'm just saying a lot of these things were cut. There, there's some, there's some lawsuits coming. A, a lot was cut, and I, I just don't know 
what to if there's going to be any lawsuits. I don't know. I mean, if this movie makes money, then why would there be any lawsuits? Is it going to make money? We don't know because it's only on HBO Max. Um, was there a need need at all for the six narrative acts at all when they're all named? It, was there a need? How do you? What do you mean? The, the chapters? Yeah, just you know, just there's black screen and it says "Don't count on it, Batman," and then it goes for like thirty minutes to an hour. Like, is that is that necessary or just just press play? I think I think that kind of took me out of the movie more. Um, than... It gave people the option. Like, obviously, it's a very long runtime, right? And which will sway a lot of people from watching this movie because of the runtime alone. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm definitely a person of that where I look at a movie's runtime and that helps the decision. Don't get me wrong, but uh, uh, to have it to be so long, but to have then the option due to the world that is streaming now, you know, to, to have the option of being able to do it episodically is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, right. I, I think it's it's a good it's a good way to introduce something like that. And I and the reason why I think I'm I'm going to give this movie a lot more credit is just because this might be the start. Of something, you know, this might be the a, a new dawn of justice, if I can be punny, you know, like <laughs> it's I, I, I when you allow a director to have full creative control and make the movie that they want to make in a length that they want to make it, you get this. This is what happens, and this is not something where they hey cut down hours and hours, which they probably could have. Right. If they were trying to do like a theatrical cut, you know, they kind of probably could have made this like, I don't know, two and a half to three hours, but yeah, yeah, would it have up. been, would it have been the same story? I, I don't know. Like there was a okay. lot in here. You're right. Okay. Let's talk about the story then. Uh, I, 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 I still don't, after a four hour movie, understand completely what these mother boxes do. So what's the point? It's kind of like the gauntlet, right? The fitting to go on. Like, I mean, like you have to have these three boxes. Individually, do these three boxes do anything individually? So, yeah, yes, they do. Uh, okay. So basically, with the difference is, and yeah, you're going to have a lot of comparisons. You, you, I, I understand that, and I think everyone else does as well too. That in Marvel, the gauntlet itself was just a mechanism to hold the Infinity Stones. It was just, right, you know, uh, um, a thing to. And then the stones themselves were created in the Big Bang. They're these ancient, uh, um, kind of life creating. Uh, stones that have always been there, you know, and that's just what it is. Whereas these mother boxes are a, a piece of technology. They are they are new. They are new tech from an old world, I guess. Okay. You know, and yes, each one of them individually, much like the stones, can do something on their own. Okay, and then when they and when they get together, then you. Again, you're comparison, but I'm saying like just like the snap, though you have unlimited power to do whatever you so desire. So, what exactly is is Stephen Wolf's thing here? Is it because because what I got from this is that Stephen Wolf was kind of like falling out of good graces with Darkseid, which that that was explained. So he's doing this to get in the good graces of him. But I really don't know what he would do with them if he were to got in his way. What do you just like? Lack for a better word nuclear bomb to earth you know what i mean like i i what what is it well um thanos was trying to do all this for his and his purpose was to eliminate half of the universe he feels that they were overpopulated and that he is doing everyone a service by eliminating half of the population you know because then that would mean more resources for everybody to go around you know he, he had a plan Dark side is just basically divide and conquer. He's just like, I, I want to take over everything. I will be in control of everything. I am the ruler. And the whole point of the mother boxes is for him to go to however many worlds and turn it into apocalypse, his own world. So they, Oh, that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Okay. So it, he is basically just um, assuming control of it. Um, does he need to transform Earth into that? I mean... That's up to him, but... Well, they were saying something, though, because th- that was something I was confused on, and I was hoping you could explain this to me. So, like, Darkseid... Not Darkseid. Steppenwolf... Uh, 
does something and he travels to a place on earth and he's like, Hey, dark side, this is the place we've been looking for the entire time. It, it, I'm assuming it has something that they need. Yeah. That's another thing too, is that they explained that dark side had been there before. Right. To earth. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and that he failed, uh, at it because he got, uh, beat up by earth's warriors at that time. Mm hmm. Yep. Which is kind of eye uh, well, I don't know. That part's believable. I mean, but the the part after that is that you leave and you just didn't, you you just forgot where you went. Well, he got he got fucking destroyed with that axe in this movie. So it's like, I mean, he was pretty much dead. His head almost got cut off. So I, yeah, you would think that somebody who's whose uh, main passion and, and motivation in life is domination would would kind of put a a note onto the planet. Right. This is the one we want to do. You know, also, I'm really impressed with um, talk about Superman a little bit here. They finally got away with that uh, with that digitally remastered mustache that he wouldn't shave off. It looks 10 times better. Oh, yeah. Looks 10 times better. And Lois Lane. Finally, we have a character out of her in the Justice League movie because she was nothing in the original. And then she has a routine. She's grieving. She she's go to get coffee at Starbucks and then she gives it to the cop and she just goes and visits uh, the grave, the whatever you want to call it, the monument. Yeah. So it's like, OK, that's not a lot of character development, but it's just something like what was Lois Lane doing? Because I don't believe that was in the original either. No, um, I liked that. And I thought it was right, but I guess I was wrong. I don't remember James Gordon in the original, but I guess he was J.K. Simmons. Um, I don't remember him hardly. He was in the other bat, the uh, Batman v Superman. I don't remember him that much. Okay. So, what else to hear that was this different? Oh, the Indian battle's totally different, too. Like, it, it's cleaner. Um, there's also, if, uh, for everybody who's listening right now, if you want to go to YouTube, you actually can check out, like, a side-by-side -side comparison that somebody's made and just how much cleaned up the footage was that uh, that they did for the Snyder Cut. Like, the ending looks good, and it makes sense. It's not just a stupid fight at the base of the nuclear plant. Like, it actually is a good fight. Um, a f another fight that I like, and tell me if I'm wrong, Eric, because I don't remember this much either from the original. I should have watched it. Um, was them fighting in, like, that sewer under Gotham Harbor. Was that in the original? I, I you're making me want to watch the original, and I really don't want to. I really don't want to. And also, as I'm looking it up, I don't think that uh, J.K. Simmons was in Batman v Superman. As I'm looking it in right now, uh, he was introduced in Justice League the original, uh, 2017, but not. Uh, but and in this one, but not Batman v Superman. Looks like. Um, no, I I don't know. Originally, also in the back the backlog is that. Um, Zach wanted to make this into two movies. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So that I think that was another part is that he instead of uh, uh, doing two movies, he have he has creative control and he just made one big movie instead. But well, that's uh, what he should have done. I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, and that so that whatever scene that you're talking about, I don't recall it being in there. It, Maybe because it had the uh, that that machine that he was using. It had to have been in there. Yeah, it was. I just looked it up. It was it, it probably not as as grave its detail as it was here in this one because everything is just turned up by eleven. You know what I mean? Like yeah, there were scenes that they completely cut. I mean, I'm not a Flash guy. I'm not a Cyborg guy, and I actually cared about them more than Wonder Woman. I cared about them more than Batman, Superman, Aquaman. I. I Aquaman's Aquaman, but Flash and Victor Stone, I became a fa like fan of. Like I really enjoyed that. The Indian Battle was great. Um, things made sense. Really enjoyed that. And of course, the ending, right, where Lex Luthor escapes uh, Arkham, with, and Slade Wilson comes in, which that was in the original. Okay, so now here's my big question. So in the original movie, in the middle of it somewhere. Batman has this nightmare where he's, where he's like in Afghanistan or whatever, and he's using a gun and he's killing things. That's not in this movie at all. That was completely taken out. That is in this movie. It's the epilogue. Well, that scene that I'm talking about is not in this movie. Correct. That scene that you that, that was in that 2017 version is not in this. And right. it's also, if you want to compare it, it's at the end of this new one, whereas in that uh, the other movie, it's in the middle. Right. Joker is in here, 
And I was nervous because you brought up to me. I was like, man, where's Joker? And you're like, oh, they're probably going to wait till the end. I was like, oh, I hope not. And they did. Yep. Um, Jared Leto was good. Like, why couldn't he have done that during Suicide Squad? Yeah, no tattoos, no excessive glitter or silver in uh, whatever the hell role that is. We got to see this this different type of Joker, which I'm on board for. I I, I would see more of it to see what more we what we have. I liked that um, this is the way that they're going with the alternate universes with um, potentially uh, this being a future scene that Cyborg had had glimpses of the future of Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, Barry Allen and his, uh, I guess the, the the time uh, paradox of him going back in time. Right. Which, which could be interesting because uh, this, because the whole point of this is that we get this great Jared Leto scene, really enjoyed it. And then we get the reveal that it's an evil Superman, not dark side that they're fighting. Yeah. That's uh, what I liked, and uh, especially because this is where we get the glimpse of it, that this is um, the Flash when he was in that suit. That's the same suit that he went into with Batman v Superman and where he went back and was telling Bruce that Lois Lane is the key. Um, and in which we can say during the nightmare that Lois Lane had died for whatever mm-hmm. reason. And then Superman has just basically gone savage. Yeah. And he's destroyed the world, and I really, really liked Jared Leto in this a lot. I was really happy. I liked that um, the makeup was a little bit different. I always like when they when they mess around with the Joker makeup a little bit, and uh, enjoyed it. And then we get a big, uh, big reveal at the end of Martian Manhunter coming to visit Bruce Wayne, and he's just like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm on your team. I'm just gonna keep an eye on everybody. See you later." Yeah, hey, call me if you need me. My name's Martian Manhunter, by the way. And right. see ya. And, and Bruce yeah. is just sitting there like, what the what the fuck was that? Was that Captain Marvel? Who just shows up out of nowhere? Like He's just randomly here. Right. But I, I yeah. Enjoyed it. I, I like that part. Um the first introduction of Ma- Martian Manhunter was him uh disguised as Martha Kent and talking with Lois Lane. Which that was a reshoot. I don't know. Uh, I do that know had th- to have been. Yeah, that was a complete reshoot because originally um, they actually had dialogue uh, Lois Lane and Martha Kent in at Lois's workplace, right at the Daily Planet, and it was just kind of a dumb. There's a lot of um, condescending parts there. It just it just seemed kind of silly and and just dumb. It just seemed dumb. At that scene, it did. Parts. But yeah. but this one, you have a, you know. It's it's answering questions in this scene, and then it gives you more questions because that's when we get the reveal that Martha Kent was actually Martian Manhunter, and I was all for it. As soon as that happened on screen, I gasped and I was like, "Oh man! Like I finally get to see Martian Manhunter. That's really cool. I like that. How they did it, yeah. I mean, it, it, they could have done it maybe with a little more finesse." But um, at the same part, like it, it looked good. It's obviously it's no it's no crawl of of the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm not here to compare. I don't want to compare too much of the universes. Right. No. I mean, I actually uh, was quite surprised. I was nervous. I was like, oh god, okay, because I only have like three days to watch this movie. Am I going to watch this in an episodic way? What am I going to do? And, uh, I, it, it took me, took me majority of the day cause I would watch a little bit and then I would do stuff, watch a little bit, do stuff. But I, I actually stayed on the last hour and a half hook, line and sinker really enjoyed it. So with that being said though, I mean, I feel we got to get a popcorn rain on this one. Now I know that you, Ed and I going back and listen to our old episode, none of us gave that a pass at all. So is this movie redeemed? So Eric, I'm going to go first and see what you say. I think this one's a medium. Medium bag. It's not bad. Um, I think it fixes a lot of issues. And uh, it tells me a lot more about the characters that I never got a chance to know before. And uh, if they s- stay in this realm, this is, a, this is a step in the good direction. This is not uh, we make a Wonder Woman movie and then take 50 steps back. Like this is, this is a good step forward. 
Um, and I hope they continue this path to continue on. I, I doubt it, but we'll see how popular this is. So a medium bag for me. Eric, are you going to be as generous as I am? I think so. Like, there's, again, to go back to it, not just this movie on itself, which I enjoyed uh, more than I than I disliked, but I think this is going to be, I really hope this is going to be something new, that we get to see this new format of directors getting to complete the project that they want and keeping, I hate the studios, man. And like the studios have butchered so much of the things that we love in the past. They butchered so many stories of, of books, of comics, you know, of other adaptations. They just do a shit job of it because they feel these execs that they know what's cool and what the people want. And they're just so out of touch with everything. Mm -hmm. And that, and they just copy and, or they just think that they, and it sucks. It really does. But when you have something like this, I think it, it worked. And I really hope that this, was a moment that shut a lot of the execs up that said, listen, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, Warner Brothers obviously does not have a Kevin Feig, and that sucks because I feel like it would have been a lot more planned. And I, I, From everything that I've heard as far as doing the research, the studios have been doing such a shit job with the creative control over these franchises, over the DCEU that it's it's made everything seem unrelated to each other. Hmm. So, uh, it, and it's a bummer. And I really hope that, again, we get to see more of this. I hope that this, this continues, that this movie does successful enough to where I get to see a Justice League 2. I would like to see more Martian Manhunter. I would like to see Green Lantern. And I would like to see more Darkseid. I think Darkseid yeah. didn't get um, a lot of play in here, but he is he is really a cool baddie, man. And I like him a lot more than Thanos. Thanos is a bitch. And I swear everyone, <laughs> no, he, he really is in the comics. Like he, cause, uh, and everyone thinks, like, oh, he's such a big baddie. Like, no, he's not, dude. He's a bitch in the, in the comics. He changed his mind and, and re snapped, you know? Uh, oh, did he? It's, it, that's, and then he's, he, he, there's a few other times where Thanos has tried to take over the universe as well, too. It's, it's, uh, you're getting, you know, Stretched down to this weird real train now of, of the story of of what Thanos is trying to do, and I feel like he was just kind of like a you know a Deus Ex villainer, if I can mm -hmm. use that, where it's just like, um, oh, we need a big baddie. Oh, we haven't heard from Thanos in a bit. Like, bring him in here, you know. And uh, well, yeah. Whereas Darkseid has always been pretty consistent about what his message is and what he's wanted to do, and also what his powers are. Dude is a beast, you know. Dude is uh, um. Just uh, amazing, and that's what I want to see because right now we get this this idea that Superman is basically God and untouchable, right? But as far as I know, in my exposure to the stories and comic books, Darkseid is like that times you know what I mean, like fifty. He is him taking out Superman is not is not a problem. Really, he can do okay. it with his arms behind his back. Which he usually has his arms behind his back. I did not know that he could do that, but all right. His laser vision out of his eyes alone are enough to fuck anyone up. Really? Okay. Well, this character is definitely something I want to see then. More of. I would like to see more of it, but then again, DC gets really weird, you know, especially with like a lot of the Justice League. Because I don't know if you remember the the cartoons that they had in like the whatever the hell, the 60s and the 70s, or like the Super Friends. Right, right. And the Wonder Twins. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need to see them. Eh, valid. Yeah, I don't need to see them either, to be honest with you. Yeah, it, it does get weird. I mean, and we're going to see that with Marvel soon, though, because now they're on their Phase 4. So we're definitely going to see Marvel get weird, especially after WandaVision, right? I mean, it's going to get crazy. Oh, I, I internet rumors seem to be um, all but confirmed that uh, for Marvel that Squirrel Girl is going to be in the in somewhere in here yeah they can't do that but all right we're gonna go with it i mean we're gonna go with it there's no other there's no other reason but all right everybody thank you so much for listening to this most recent episode of movie guys podcast like always check us out on all the social media platforms and on movieguyspodcast.com well wait a minute did you say it? did you give your bag rating i did medium Oh, okay. Oh, then I did not say my bag rating. Oh, you did not? Okay, what was yours? Medium? I was talking it up and everything else like that. Uh, no, I, I actually... 
I want I want to give it a, a, a large. I really do, just because of how how much of an improvement and how much I'm comparing it to the other one is. You ain't this one a large. I you know that's it's a tough thing because I could easily just give it a medium with like some extra butter on it. You know, there's a lot of things that I I could pick apart about this movie. There really sure. is. Right, right. But I'm trying to go for the overall effect. I enjoyed it. I watched it all in one sitting. I know I think you did too. And I just enjoyed everything. Everything that I watched, I was watching it, expecting to be disappointed. And the more and more I watched, the more I was like, oh, okay, I'm actually into this. Would I watch it again? Not anytime soon. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Not anytime soon at all. So maybe I just talk myself off the ledge there and I'll just give it a medium. What is bag. it? Is it a medium? It's a, yeah, I'll get I'll give it a medium. I feel like there there could have been yeah, I'll just I'll just say a medium just to kind of play it to play it safe. I think the rewatchability, uh, the ability to rewatch it probably has a lot to say in it. And again, the four hour runtime is not something to uh, to bat an eye at either. No, yeah, the four hour runtime is just absolutely, absolutely but ridiculous. But I, I really, I really enjoyed the movie. It got it's getting high ratings. So no, it is, it is. People are happy with it, which we knew that was going to happen, right? I mean, Sonic got high ratings because you know, hey. They were redone, and they listened to us. Meh. You know, I... That could have been Nalda's marketing, by the way, too. Could have been. You know, the funny thing is that I'm uh, looking at her list so far this year, starting with Eleanor Holmes of our season here, and uh, you've only given one large bag so far, and that was Malcolm and Marie, and I have given nothing but mediums and smalls. I have not had a large bag yet. I feel there's... Malcolm and Marie had left an impression. You know, I think it was just very well done from, from start to finish. Again, like the, I, I think there's too many gripes I have about this movie to give it a large bag. Well, so far you've already given one no bag this year, which is very rare. Do you know what that was before we head out the show? Oh, new Nightmare? Yeah, that's the only one so far. Yeah, deserve it. Right, right. Well, we'll see what's going on for the rest of the year. And like I said before, everybody, thank you for checking us out. And always go to movieguyspodcast.podbean.com, download this episode and many others, and also wherever you get your podcast from. We are on those platforms. Eric, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll be back next week for another awesome episode. Have a good night.